Class of 2010, parents, guests, and colleagues. Life tries to pull you in a million different directions, but college changes you. It forces you to look inside yourself and ask, what's my oxygen? It challenges you to find what is so important that you can't live without it. And the key to deciding what is most important is memories. Over the past several weeks, I've interviewed 20 seniors about IUP places, events, and people that helped them to discover what's important in life. They spoke about being on their own and about dreams that are still within reach. They shared stories that are sometimes silly, sad, and inspiring. They remembered times when they felt simply happy. I call these cling memories because they stay with you for a long time. And the reason why they stay with you is the purpose of my speech. You see, I believe that college creates cling memories because you need them down the road when life will demand that you arrange your priorities, when a question like, how should I live my life, is no longer an academic exercise, but it's for real. Seniors, I believe that your cling memories from IUP will help you get through life. I had never met most of the seniors I talked to, but I felt lucky to get to know them. They gave me permission to share their stories, and I took lots of notes. Let me begin with two seniors who told me about random acts of silliness. Aaron Chang still drives his nine-year-old black Toyota. I've had 14 people in it cruising for food at 3 a.m., he said. We would drive around Indiana three or four times and always end up at Eaton Park. One time, we were after the best view of Indiana, so we drove up the hill to St. Bernard's Church. I, glazed down, I gazed down upon the town, and then I looked up at the white sky, and all of a sudden, I saw these strange, black, stringy things in the air. I thought they were bugs or pollution, but they were in my eyes. My friends turned to me and said, Aaron, dude, those are floaters. Everybody has them. I talked to Meredith Bird, who has five brothers and sisters. She reminisced about dinner time in Foster, pushing tables together because the group kept growing. It was a time when you could be carefree and juvenile, Meredith laughed. We would do silly stuff like steal each other's hats, hide behind corners so we could jump out and scare people, and race each other to the door. We were such freshmen. Freshmen are not freshmen for very long. Some of the seniors I spoke to were grateful for eye-opening experiences. Rose Catless is a native of Indiana with bright green eyes who met her two best friends at orientation. They helped me see the world in a different way, she said. One of them took me to an anti-war protest, and I couldn't believe the people I saw there. There were hippie types, but also people in suits, kids, and older people. Many of them got arrested. I realized how passionate people could be about things they really believe in. I never would have had that experience on my own. Ryan Hancherik grew up in Greensburg and applied only to IUP. When he got here, he did a few dumb things, but Ryan turned his life around when he realized he was a person who liked to get things done. He landed an internship at Hershey Country Club and started two businesses. I've found my happy place, he said. Ray Edwards has short blonde hair and is training for a marathon. He told me, in 2008, when Cornell West spoke in Eberly Auditorium, he helped me to understand why race matters. As a white guy, I used to think if I lived right and did my part, race was not an issue. IUP teaches you the way other people see the world. One of my roommates was a Haitian from Harrisburg and another was a banjo-playing sailor from Allentown. When I went to India this year, I met a kid my age whose main ambition in life was to finish work each day and then go home and take care of his aging parents. Most guys I know look for ways to get away from their parents. This guy's main goal was to help them. Some seniors remembered the support they received from family and friends. 
or of making it on their own. I met Emily Trenny, who said she'll never forget November 4th, 2008. It was 11.30 p.m., and CNN had just announced that Barack Obama had won the election. The campus went wild, she said. A wall of students headed into the Oak Grove, and I was pushed into the celebration. It continued late into the night. People were climbing trees in the Oak Grove and jumping into leaf piles. I will never forget that. Reflecting on how she got through college, Emily paused, then said she would tell her mom and dad, thank you. They always supported me and pushed me, even when I hated it. Hated it. I love them for everything. I'm a little scared to go out on my own. Danielle Graves grew up in Philly and figured if she came to Indiana, no one would come after her out here. Danielle was valedictorian of her high school, and she was heartbroken when she got her first grades freshman year. Things went downhill after that. College was different. It took a while, but then Danielle pulled it together with some help from friends. But mostly, she figured it out on her own, just as her mom told her she would have to do when she died in 2005. Are you excited about your future? I asked her. She grew a big smile and said, I can't wait for a new start. But I don't plan to change much about myself because I think I'm a good person to begin with. I talked to seniors who recalled people at IUP who left a lasting impression on them. Shane Conrad remembers having a bunch of friends when he was a freshman. One girl, Sarah, she hugged everybody, he said. She hugged us so much that we would all huddle together so she could hug us all at once and we wouldn't waste time. You've seen them running together at 6 a.m., and you see them in uniform here today, reminding us that, for all its flaws, we live in a pretty great country. A few weeks ago, I spoke with ROTC cadets Richard Recorden, Michael D'Amico, and Charles Rufo. They'll be commissioned as Army officers here today. Reardon, D'Amico, and Rufo, I'll call them by the last names because that's the way they talk, are tough, gentle, funny, smart, and in awesome physical shape. I asked them if there's anything they're afraid of. One said spiders. Another said heights. Heights, I asked, thinking about Army helicopters and airplanes. I'm OK with climbing towers, roller coasters, stuff like that, he wanted me to know. Just please, God, don't put me on a Ferris wheel. I told him he probably wouldn't have to worry about Ferris wheels in the Army. I asked them what I should be thinking about when cadets march down the aisle carrying the flag. Recordin said, the handling of the flag, that shows respect for everybody in uniform. You can take the flag for granted or not, but it's your flag. As a teacher, you have to try to get to know your students because when you stand at the front of the class, you have no idea of the complex lives behind the bright faces. Julie Vavrek is president of Mortar Board and captain of the IUP Rifle Club. We met at the shooting range in Pierce Hall, and she showed me her rifle. It's pink and green, and she wins a lot of tournaments with it. I brought my sorority sisters here to the shooting range. We start out shooting at paper targets, but mostly we like to shoot at fun stuff like pennies and little rubber toys and paintballs and credit cards and textbooks. Textbooks are good, she said, because you can see how far the bullet goes in. That's a lesson in itself, she said. In December of my freshman year, I did something radical, Julie said. When my dog Brandy died, I got a tattoo on my lower back to remember him. It's a paw print. I'm the first person in my family to get a tattoo, and when they found out, my parents flipped. My dad couldn't even speak to me. My mom cried. Even my coach pulled me aside and said, Julie, that thing can be sanded off. Julie looked straight at me and said, no one's going to sand off my Brandy's paw print. Maria Kaminsky grew up in Philadelphia and then moved to Indiana to go to college to be 
some place where her two children could have after-school activities. Her favorite place is the planetarium in Wyant Hall. I'm working two jobs and going to school, and I've had some challenges in my life, Maria said. We decided to get married after I was diagnosed. I'd taken care of my mother for seven years during her battle. I didn't want to put him through that. And so I told him goodbye. But he wouldn't hear it. He had fought in Iraq and said he was not about to let cancer beat us. Twelve days before our wedding day, my fiancé was killed in an auto accident. He had survived Iraq, I've survived cancer, but just like that, he was gone. We talked for six minutes before he died. As Maria and I talked in Wyand Hall, I felt I was in the presence of someone who is gifted and wise. Being an older student, I didn't think I would fit in with all these young people on campus. I mean, when I graduated from high school, there were still nine planets, she laughed. <laughs> but students here accepted me immediately. Some of my professors have been the most compassionate people ever. When I was having chemo, one of my professors fed me. They wanted me to succeed. I feel like IUP is my family, even if I won't be around for some of the reunions. Why the planetarium, I asked. Maria explained that in a paper she wrote for one of her classes, instead of using the word death, she wrote the other side of the moon. That might be what got me started going to the planetarium, she said. Last Tuesday, I spent my fiancé's 50th birthday in the planetarium, and I thought, if my life had gone smoothly, I don't know if I would have gone to college. Coming to IUP helped me leave another life behind. My degree is something I did for myself, and I have more friends now than I've ever had in my life. Melody Thomas is a commuter. She's a graphic artist and works two jobs. She has hazel eyes and has been accused of spreading extreme laughter and happiness. I want to go to graduate school and be a professor, Melody told me, but where I grew up, people would say, she's fooling herself into thinking she can do things she can't. Maybe that's why I have a bad habit of not believing people when they tell me I'm good at something, but one of my professors said, Melody, you have grad school written all over you. And my boss, where I work on campus, told me, I'm good at what I do. That's when I decided I have a future. Earlier, I said that your cling memories will help you to figure out what matters most in life. Let me share one last story with you. Gerald Mensah left his family and came to Indiana from a small town in Nigeria where he was born. Gerald is now a confident 27-year-old who barely recognizes the person he was when he started IUP. Acting crazy eventually caught up with me. I was young. It ruined my marriage, my job, holidays. I started off on the wrong foot, but that has changed. I decided that I wanted my family to be proud of me, and I became a different person. Really, that was it. My family means everything to me. I'm here now in the US, but I don't want to forget where I came from either. Remembering where you came from makes you who you are. He said, as many complaints as I have about IUP, I'll really miss this place. It's been a privilege to go to school here. Not Ivy League, not Big Ten, but I've gotten a great education at IUP. Then he spoke softly. What I really learned at IUP was in and outside of class. I learned what's important to me. To me, you can't put a price on that. And there you have it, class of 2010. Memories of college cling to you for the rest of your life because college is where you discover what's important to you. Bob Marley said, you have to be someone. As you wind your way through life's side streets, memories of IUP will appear in your rearview mirror, and they will be closer than they appear. Those memories are calling you back to a time when you laughed often and made friends easily, 
slept soundly, and worked like crazy. Those memories are calling you back to a time when you were enthusiastic and ambitious about your priorities. Down the road, when IUP memories flash in your mirror, remember that they're trying to tell you to hold on to what matters more to you than anything else in the world, just as you did in 2010 in a town called Indiana. Congratulations, class of 2010.